Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Mike Delicio, bravissimo, sporadically bored, but never pianissimo. Z, y'all see, voice of the people. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. Hi, hi. Not even a single hi. hello. Hi. No, hi. I refuse. So You're gonna, you you hi. go high, I go low. How about salutations? You could have done that. Say, yes. Salutations. Greetings. No, salutations is much better. You're right. I salutations is definitely hi. the hoity toity. Super pretentious. Yes. Yeah, so if you say salutations, then yes. you don't like me. That's probably true. Or you're trying to impress me. With the word salutation? Yes. How many people, like, they walk in, like, salutations, I feel like, uh... Just, like, again, they're, they're the annoying ones. <laughs> they probably. are. They're the ones that are, like, yeah, they, they you know word of the day toilet paper people, yeah. <laughs> word of the day toilet paper? Yeah. Is that a thing? Pretty sure it is. They go through, like, 20 words a day. That's right. Anywho, we like to say, on that note, <laughs> we'd like to say thanks to some of our uh, <laughs> Kickstarter backers <laughs> from 2023. We'd like to say thank you to Felipe Goykovic, to Grant Lyon... With Grant's Game Rex, also we're glad you got your channel back. Yeah, yeah, good luck. Yes, good, Grant. Good, yes. good to hear that. David Michael Polson, Constantine Sudorikov, David and Celeste Ricks, Chad, Kat, Levi, and Esther Hadding, Pell from Uppsala, Hazzi, Michelle and Linda Tracy, Benjamin and Christopher Ilbeck, James Dollard, Owen, Aoife, and Cillian Cunningham, Mark Valentine and John Kotalski. Hmm. I appreciate, by the way, the people who put in the pronunciation. Yes. Which is not most people, as you can tell. That's true. Ooh. Thank hold you, up. Cthulhu Mars. We got a Mars. super chat from, from trains to Cthulhu Mars. Mm. I like that. And what do they say, Tom? Well, we don't read what everyone says. What so does let's it say? I can't there. quite make out what it says, it Tom. Says Z Garcia needs glasses. What? No, it doesn't. It says Zed Garcia needs glasses. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Sorry. <laughs> Zed Garcia is my number one. So how many people, have you had people walk up to you and just call you Zed? It happens like at every convention <laughs> where there's British people. <laughs> or, or Canadians do it too, right? Right. But they say sorry first. Sorry. Sorry, Zed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's funny every time. Welcome back to the top 30 here of our top 100 games of all time. We're getting close to the end. Man, I tell you, it's close. This has been a week of very strong crescendo will happen at the end of the week because we're going on the cruise. Yes. yes. And we're finishing the top 10. Yes. yes. Everything top is coming. Top 100. Yes. Top, top 100. 300, really. Right. We should do top 300 next year. No. <laughs> That's a good idea, Z. Oh, jeez. You got got. Oh, jeez. Somebody just said I should tell you to go watch Star Trek. <laughs> what? That's my new insult to bear. Yeah, that is. That's, 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 the, that's the insult. That's, uh, that's a horrible diss, as the kids say. You red shirt. I, I read a very vicious argument about the continuity of Star Trek and did it matter. And I thought... You read it. <laughs> I'm not that nerdy. Yeah, but you read it, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did read you it. You know what I have never read? A book. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, Mike. Well, you did you have, have, have that one for free. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Riley, for the super chat. Okay. So anyway, we're going through our top 100 of all time. We were just talking about how we talk about these games a lot more than we normally do. Mm -hmm. But that means doesn't mean you've heard of them before. You might not. So we're going to get started here. But before we do, we want to remind you, we're running a Dice Tower Kickstarter. That's we have part not of your yet crescendo. Funded. That is also part of that. Yeah. I'm hoping the week ends with us funding, too. Yes. That'd be n -n nice. So, uh, yeah. Yes. DiceTowerKickstarter.com. DiceTowerKickstarter.com, yep. Check it out. But here we go. Let's start with Mike's boring number 30. I'm yeah. glad you said that. Oh, number 30. 
Happy gaming, everybody. If it's space based, yeah. it'd be great. It is not, but the reason why I'm glad you called it boring, because it's already been on your list, sir. Yeah! I believe it's a three-way crossover. I never said it was boring. I love this game. Yeah. I think it's great, and so is you when you're listening. Thank stuff. you! It's I've only read uh, many pamphlets. It's only down six spots, so right there where, where it's been, basically. This is a game by not John DeClaire, but another uh, great designer, Ryan Lockett. This is Near and Far. Wow. Three-way mm -hmm. crossover, Vassal. I'm not surprised it's on your list. I am surprised it's this high, though. I didn't yeah. realize you liked it. I, I love Near and Far. Oh, if I'm games, not if but... I'm not wanting to play mm -hmm. a big campaign, I go to Near and Far. Right. This is this is a game that you can play um, in a, in a in a smaller chunk. Right. It's not as have as... you ever played through it like a campaign? Oh, when I first got it, the first thing I did was play a campaign. Well, he almost went. Yeah. No, I didn't. I was that saying thing he does. You know. I He's was like, yeah, you idiot. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I gotta Along watch that because I certainly that. don't mean it like no, that. No, no, no. You should keep doing it and especially follow it up with the words. You idiot. <laughs> yeah. Like idiot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right. Um, I'm just going to go with idiot. I'm going to take the U off. Um, no, near and far, it's, a, it's a, a really nice combination of a little bit of worker placement, but it's mostly about traveling on that map, going through those little uh, encounters. You have reading stories, putting your tents down. Um, I agree with you that just the base game is great. The only thing that I do like about the expansion is it does make the mine a little bit more interesting. But um, it's still, this is a really good game. And uh, it's not hard to teach. It's not really hard to get out on the table because it's got the spiral book. Right. Was this the first spiral, spiral book, book game ever, ever made? made? Not ever made, but I mean like... That's really kind of been part of this trend we're seeing. I'm trying to think of like flip over and it's a new map and yeah. therefore a new story. Above, above new and below set. didn't have it. No, it didn't. I think it might be the first. This one. might be yeah. the first of that of that yeah newer group. So near Maybe far stuff is, um, stuffed is it stuffed okay. fables? Stuffed fables was before this. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe it's definitely in that early in that early kind of school of those. So. You've you've heard it from Tom. You've heard it from Z. Now you heard it from me. Great game. Oh, it's me. Jeez. Mm. My number thirty uh, was my twenty-two last year. It's been as high as maybe my number two or three, though. Um, and it's slipping a little bit. There is if there is some serious uh, content fatigue for this one. Not to say I'm not still enjoying these expansions, but there are now a ridiculous uh, amount of them. Okay. 2017 Stuff Fables is 2018. Oh, Near and Far is before Stuff right. Fables. Okay. Uh, my number 30 is Niroshima Hex. Oh, I thought it was going to be something else. Okay. Yeah, Niroshima Hex has a... It's a... Hmm. Dueling game. Uh, you can play with more than two. I don't always recommend that. I prefer it very much at two players. And you are going to take two factions in this post-apocalyptic setting against each other, taking turns, drawing, and placing some of these tiles, deciding their facing, deciding their position on the battle map, and uh, triggering battles if you draw one of those tiles and choose to activate it. You can also activate, uh, or I should say a battle automatically activates if the board is full. This is a very interesting game. There's really nothing else quite like it. It's a yeah. tactical placement, tile placement game in which you do this sort of, I mean, it's sort of, for me in my head anyway, it does this serious like swinging between very abstract, very like mechanical, I need to aim at this guy and I'll be faster so I'll kill him before he kills this. And then when a fight triggers, I'm like, yeah, whoa, <laughs> Bomb! Ah! And then half the board is wiped dead, you know what I mean? And then I go back to, hmm, okay. So I'm pointing at this guy, and this is eliminated, and he's netted, so deactivated. I, I love that this game gives me both of those things in the same experience, mm -hmm. you know? Very thematic, very abstract thinking. Love that. Like I said, the expansions and the factions uh, give you a lot of different stuff. There's a lot of them, too. Uh, but I still really like the ones they've been coming out with. It, it's great. I mean, the one of the new ones, the Beasts, was super cool. Really like that one. Hmm. So there you go, Hiroshima Hex, a classic. 
and my number 30. All right. My number 30 has been on my list since the very beginning. Uh, it debuted at 26, and now it is 30. That's pretty wow. good. Wow. And when did it debut? You uh, said the very beginning. Your first list was on? Yeah, 2005. Okay, wow. Jeez. It was called a different name then, but I don't oh. even... Um, they, I play this a minimum of two or three times a year because I played it every Dice Tower East. Oh. And... Is it, it Caravande? It is Caravande. Or as we oh, call it today, pitch car. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah that's, that's great. Mike set pitch car up this year. I, I've set it up in the last few years. Then I reset it up. But you always do. You always <laughs> tell me. You're like, set it up. I'm going to change it, but just putting up something up there until I do the tournaments. Yeah, I have a, I have an interesting thing I'm going to try this, this mm. coming year if I remember to do it. Um, but yeah, this, this is a expensive game, mm. although not compared to games nowadays. That's it's true. More, but it's a game that you can bring out at a get-together, a family get-together, and everybody will play it. Even yeah. Uncle Joe will come over. Not and, Uncle Joe. Well, he'll be holding a beer in one Okay, hand got it, okay. And, and flicking with the other hand. Mm. Or an Aunt Sal, will, she'll let that cigarette dangle on the lip when she... <laughs> well, that'll flick. just add a little bit of uh, road uh, rash to the to the track. That's true. You know? You've met Uncle Joe and Aunt Sal. They're at every get-together. Uh, yeah. And they think board games are dumb. Right. They're not like board games back in my day. That's right. But Pitch Car... They, they'll be okay. They'll be all right okay with that. Yep. And it really is fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. lots of yelling and cheering, and it's a, it's a, it's a great time. Will you ever play the game without a jump and a loop? Well, yes to the loop. Okay. No to the jump. No to the jump. Got to jump. have the jump. There's always a jump. All right. I don't even know why you just asked that question. Hey, look, I got I got to ask these things. Oh, <laughs> it's <laughs> not comfortable, but I have to ask these things. People's choice. We're on 30, right? Yes. yes. Okay, People's Choice number 30 was 35 last year and 59 the year before that. It keeps moving up despite it being a flash in the pan. Crew, Mission ah, Deep Sea. See, the people are people, oh, no. the people are with me. This is the new one, though. Oh, okay. And it's been on the list for three years straight. So this wow. is one of the few times where the sequel is more popular than the follow-up. Is the follow-up on the list? Has it been on the list? Yeah, it was This is down, the follow-up, right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was the yeah. original on the list. Yeah. The original was at the very beginning, I think, somewhere No, they're thinking there. of Mike's Mine was a number 100, yeah. Yeah, mm, he put right, it on there for, for effect, really. Not really. Crew, 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 crew. Mm. Crew to the crew. <laughs> crew. It sounds like it's on there a lot. <laughs> crew, you, you don't say things that loud when you're looking for them? I always do. Keys, keys, keys. Rolex, Keys. Lamborghini. Yeah. I meant looking for something that actually you have. Oh. Not the... Uh... Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> okay, let's Old move Navy on, shirt. this is super boring. <laughs> it really I don't is. care that much. I'm dying here. You anyway, asked for this it. Was number, this is number 30. It's more popular than the first one. Yay, they fixed Cooperative it. Cooperative trick-taking game. Yes. They are coming up with a third one. I'm curious. Um... I'm pretty happy with this this second one because the second one basically is the first one and more, you know. Okay, so okay, okay, yeah. What's the new setting? I need to know the setting. Colon. <laughs> I would play that. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> have like Fantastic Voyage, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like we that. have Tokyo Poo Divers. We still have played. We do. It. You know. Never... Yeah, but that's not a cooperative game. I meant to play that Tuesday. You got to be very careful. And it's not a trick taking game. game. Well, you always got to be careful yeah. when you're dealing with a colon. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go on. This is true. Hello everybody, my name is Alexander Pfister. Greetings from Austria. This is game 29. Okay. Wow! Okay. I sh if I'd have known, I would have worn my Isle of Sky t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Man, we got... Pulling in the big names. Tom. That's just, impressive. I just emailed random people on my email list. Well, let me just explain to you who I don't have in my email list randomly. Alexander Pfister. My goodness. Right? Whew. Okay. Huh. Wow, I didn't know that would impress Mike oh. so much. Mike is impressed. Consider him impressed. He's oh. never been this impressed by you. I'm impressed. I know. I'm fister struck. Um, <laughs> don't, don't ever use that terminology again. I kind of like that. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, oh, what's happened to me? My number 29. Uh, 
My number 29 is down a little bit, but not much. It is still an incredible, incredible game that's a bit hard to get to the table because it's definitely hard to teach, but it's such an incredible design. It is Root. It is my highest ranked war game because this is absolutely a war game. No ways about it. I assume it's also your lowest ranked board game, uh, war game on this list. Um, Do you have another war game on this no, list? No, but I have war-themed games like... Blitzkrieg and okay, stuff like that. I, I yeah, suppose, this is yeah. this is straight up a war game. It's 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 based on the coin model, the counterinsurgency. It was seventy eight. Um, the other crew. Okay. Yeah, I know. Got it. Um, People no, said it. Root, oh. Root is a, a brilliant game, and 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 I'm not going to even pretend that my entry point to this was the look of the game. If this looked like a standard war game and played exactly the same, I don't think I would have tried it. Sure. Um, and I think that's a brilliant decision because it does look great. It is, you know, a different approach, and it got me into understanding what the appeal of these asymmetric war games are. Um, but I don't think I want to go higher than this. Like, I mean, Root is about the level of this type of game I can handle. Sure. Um, but boy, it's just brilliant. It is a brilliant design. Um, where asymmetric factions are all facing off against each other. They have different win conditions. They play with different mechanisms. You know, the birds, you know, play with like a programming. And, and it, it's just, again, a brilliant design and uh, one that, unfortunately, it did drop, um, what, how many, 19 spots. It may drop in the future just because it is hard to get this out. So this was your number 10? Yeah. Is that right? Uh, no. Uh, if it went, yeah, it was number my number 10. Yeah. Wow, top 10, huh? Yeah, and, and again, the design is stellar. I just don't get it played as much. Sure. The app is fantastic, too. Yeah, I've yet to play this technically mm -hmm. in, in face-to-face. -face, yeah. Know? I played the app. Right. But, yeah. <clears throat> All right, my number 29 was already on the people's list, I think, on... Mike's, I th it, it, this might be everybody okay. already. And it is uh, Ryan Lockett once again. This was my 28 last year, so the same thing. Sleeping Gods is my yeah. 29. I already thought there was one on your list, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? My osmosis, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, I had Near and Far on my list. Um, and Sleeping Gods, I like yeah, it. Even all more. three of us have had both of those two games on our list. That they are true. amazing designs. And again, you sort of have to pick which one you think is, is going to give you what you want. Uh, this is more story. Yes. It's also a more demanding campaign, I would say. But it really is about the, the, the mechanisms here. Um, not that they take a back seat, because I think there's a lot of moving parts actually to this game. But it clearly puts that story first, the reading first, the the cast of characters first, mm -hmm. whereas Near and Far has a much better balance. Yeah. And I think, actually, Above and Below, which came out before that, had a the opposite balance, was clearly just sort of a set collection game right. with a tiny little bit of story, a little bit of reading in there, almost, you know, almost unnecessary. But this is such a cool world. There's yes. so many neat encounters you're going to have, so many cool places you'll go, things that you flip the page and look at and go, I don't know what I'm looking for, but I want to go <laughs> sail there. Yeah, yeah. I want to see what, what's going on right there. And you show up, and there's a little village there, and you meet the people, and they maybe give you a quest, and you, you encounter all sorts of stuff. I love this world. I think you, Mike, are the one who said that it was like a Zelda yeah. kind of setting. Yep. Um... New Zelda, I suppose. Yes, but yes. It's like an open world RPG ish kind of thing. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. That's yeah, what it I feels like, like to me. Breath of the Wild specifically is what I was thinking. Right, yeah. right, yeah. So there you go, my 29. Thank you, Scarlett, for the super chat. My number 29 debuted in 2005 on my list at 62 and then promptly disappeared from your list, and it's the first time it's come back on. Okay. When, did, it, when did, the, did this happen? 2005. It came back, and it's at 20. Nine. So wait, wait, wait. 2005, let me slow this down, showed up, was it high that year? It was 62. Went away in the next year. Well, I don't know if it's the next year. I don't have 22 at 2007, 8, but it was gone by 9. Okay, mm. so it went away pretty quickly. Uh -huh. It's been gone until right now. Until this year, and then it jumps to 29? It does. What is happening here? Hold on, we need more context clues. Yes, is this, yes. Was it just reprinted? Yes. 
not only was it reprinted, before it was reprinted, I had started playing it again a few times for various reasons, and I was like, man, this game, okay. I just like it better every time I play it. I and then they came out with the best version of this game ever made. I got it from Roy. Oh! Well, why Roy's you going like that? this. Roy's doing the raw thing. <laughs> raw! I mm -hmm. love Ra. This is my highest ranked Kenichi game, and he's lucky he's even this high. Oh, wait, why, wait, hold on, huh? That's a backhanded compliment. <laughs> Dr. Kenichi, I, ap I apologize. <laughs> yeah, I would love for my love of your Kenichi. games has made Tom your mortal enemy. I apologize. <laughs> the Horrible, man. No, as a matter of fact, you talk to him at con conventions. I'm too scared. This is my four. I, I've had lunch with him. I, I took know. a picture of the shit and said it's a bike. I was like, yeah, what? I know. Mike mm. has seen him. I've seen him That's multiple times. It. He's like, I wanted, no, I don't want to I wanted to talk him. to him at Essen last year. But he's he was, actually one of the nicest guys. He's, yeah. Um, no, but I really do like it. Four of his games are on my, my top 100 this year that were not last year. Last year I had zero Kanichia games, I think. Mm -hmm. But this one is fantastic. And not 25th Century didn't just make it look nicer. Nope. They made it playable. I mean, not playable. Wow. It was already playable. Wow. But they made it They made it so easy to they, play, I they guess. And you know, Tool, to be fair. He designed that UI, that new board. All of that is yes, great. I agree. I mean, it's a great... He's part of the, you know, the team. They hired him, right? So... Yeah, that's how Great that works. Great job. No, I'm just saying, yeah. It's... Uh, yes. Anyway, very, very fantastic game. My number 29, Ra. Mm. Wow. That's that's high up there, Tom. It's the last new game you'll see for a while. 29 Ooh. for the people was 14 last year. Actually, this has been on the list since the very beginning. This debuted at 8 in 2011, then was at, went as high as 3. Mm. It's been on my list. It's been on everyone's list, I think. Maybe not yours. Mike doesn't really like it, but but good people with good taste like it. Ticket to Ride. Oh, I like it. Was this on, on your, your list? list? It's not my top 100. Then you don't have good taste, sir. That's interesting to me. So mm. so you would rather play Azul over Ticket to Ride, hands down? Yeah. Yeah, not me. I'd Although, you, forgot you can't... Saying, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Idiot. Idiot. <laughs> yeah. No, these... Um, well, I, thank but, you. They're, I don't think they're comparable games. I, I don't think you can, you can do compare that. We have been comparing things. anything. What are you talking about? All what I'm saying is... Any, give me two things. Any two random things. No, no. Things, you're, not, you're, you're not hearing me. The decision will never be, am I choosing between Ticket to Ride or Azul? It would be, am I choosing between Ticket to Ride or Railways of the World? Or am I no, choosing between it's Ticket it's, to Ride or... If you some people uh, you're teaching games to, these are both valid... Uh, introductory oh, then, games. Then yes, I would teach Azul over this because I like Azul more than this. I know. I was right. pointing out the I'm error. Correct. Nah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like how your nah and your yes both <laughs> both are hurt super me so much. condescending. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was that sarcasm? <laughs> nah. I can do the other one. Nah. nah. Idiot. Anyway, this one's <laughs> still very, very popular and this is why I like our top 100 better than like <laughs> Board Game Geeks rankings because People play Ticket to Ride and like it. Yeah. It's not maybe critically acclaimed by a lot of people, but it's fantastic. Oh, I think it's critically acclaimed. But well, you know what I mean. It's like it's not even close to the top 100 on Board Game Geek because it's just not a heavy Euro game, and that's what you got to be. There's or that, and also there's a million expansions. I think that hurts it too, as far as like on the BGG thing. It's a microcosm BGG. Right, right. This game has sold to so many people that you, I, I'll be like, do you know what a Grickle is? And they're like, yeah, some sort of soft drink. I don't know what that is. But they play Ticket to Ride. I think Ticket to Ride is basically taken for granted. For it, the mass, for, for, for gamers? Yeah, basically. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it is. So. I certainly do. Mm -hmm. Anyway, gonna, fantastic. Who's going to take it from me? Nobody. 29, Ticket to Ride. I'm Kane Klinko, and this is number 28. And Tom, there's no way I wear clothes like this, so I have to film this at Kohl's. <laughs> I was about to oh, compliment him on the way he looked. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> loved that. I love that. I also like that Kane Klinko was doing something on a very strict timer, right? Because that like fits his design philosophy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get this clip done in well, six seconds. Well, I can tell seconds. everyone 15 seconds or less. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Some people obviously didn't listen to that at all. But. That's true, but Kane did. Did a nice job. Good stuff. I love that pan over to the <laughs> store. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was really good. Um... My number 28 is uh, pretty much where it's been uh, for a while. This is another game that I feel like 
I don't get here talked about much. I don't see getting played as much, but I just think it's fantastic. And this is the game that kind of made me reevaluate my thoughts on skirmish games. I used to think I didn't really like them that much, but Wildlands showed me that, yeah, you know, there are certain skirmish games that really, really work for you. And and then there, I've sensed this, I've played many, but Wildlands is a Martin Wallace design, and Martin Wallace is one of those designers that's kind of all over the place. He does card games, he does dice games, um, and with Wildlands, he does a miniatures-based skirmish game that is all card driven yeah. and uh, asymmetrical to an extent where you're going to be playing as one of these fantasy races and you've got the, the diff there's all different kinds of maps right the original one I think came with two two-sided uh, two yeah. map and there have been multiple maps that have come out since then, some that are better for smaller player counts and there have been new factions that have come Actually, out did ha this I think has hit a hard stop I haven't seen anything for this in two years now. No, it's been it's been a while, but but there's plenty out there. Would I like sure. to see more? Sure, maybe. But I also would be very happy if they just stopped where they are because look, you've got a cooperative expansion now, so you can play the game cooperative. Really? You've got small maps, you've got big maps, you've got all different ways to play it, and Osprey has done a fantastic job with the production. So you know, I, I'm good with with where Wildlands is at now. It's plenty of content, doesn't yeah. feel bloated. Um, and, and I really like the card-driven system, and I love the idea that you're seeding the board with your opponent's stuff that they're going for, and you can pop up wherever you, you know, you have cards that kind of determine it's it. It's a nice way to set up the game. Yeah, you decide a half. You had ten cards, right? Yeah. Half are where you begin. Where you pop out. Half are the, your opponent's... It's crystals. Objectives. Yes, yeah. It's really smart. And you can win by ga gathering all of your crystals or defeating the other team. So you've yeah. got different ways to play it. So good. So, so good. And, um, yeah, it's, it doesn't get the acclaim I feel like it deserves. My number 28 is Wildlands. I would like Wildlands to be reprinted in a King of Tokyo setting. It was reprinted in a... Judge Dredd setting. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. But just the base game, That'd be I believe. That would a good crossover. It Monsters, would be. Monsters. Yeah. That could be like a big city, big buildings, big mm -hmm. city, and you can go like collect the generators from the city and the whatever, or just knock each other out. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying you could fix it. Um, <laughs> my number 28 was number 9 last year. Mm. Uh, and we oh, talked about it a little bit earlier today because it is the sequel, the younger sequel, to a big popular game. This is Seven Wonders Duel. Oh. Seven Wonders Duel is a fan fantastic two-player game that does something that not too many two-player games did before this, and that's drafting, especially open drafting. Right. In a clever way, in a very interesting way. It gives you this feeling of, uh, you know, it, it took basic, basic sort of take and pass drafting and put it on the table for two players in this sort of geometric pattern where... Not only what you take is important, but where you take it from. Because if you uncover, fully uncover one of the face down cards, it gets revealed face up and it is now available. You can only ever take something that isn't covered in any way. So you have to decide what you want and, and when you take it. Forcing your opponent to have fewer options is a big part of this game, you know? Yeah. Uh, forcing things down to a single car so you can have control of the flow of the game. That's a very good, you know, interesting uh, sort of m tactical move you can make. And then it has a few different ways for the game to end. That's the other big thing. Where you can just go to the end of the game and score up your victory points and see how you did. Or you could go for a militaristic win where the game ends prematurely because you pushed your opponent into a corner with, a, with your military might or your scientific studies, and then you win that way. I really like that those things, kind of in a scythe way, can just be threats. Mm -hmm. Like combat in scythe is sort of a threat of combat. In this one, you can certainly win this way, but I, I love that it also just sort, sort of behaves as a pressure point. It's like, you, you're going to keep taking the cards I want, you need to keep an eye on this, because I'm pushing military... On you. If I get a couple of good cards lined up, this game's over. 
I've yep. seen every way. Done. I've seen every yeah. way it, too. It yeah. makes it so you can't completely ignore something and just spam what you want to do. You can't. You right. you need it's a dance and you got to be careful about mm -hmm. where you step. So there you go. That is Seven Wonders Duel My Twenty Eight. I-28 is a more complex Euro. It's been on my list for eight years. Last year it was 17. Um, I didn't get this one back to the table. It is a Rosenberg. and it Lavra. is No. That's much higher. The Harbor? Feast for Odin. Oh. Feast for Odin. Very much enjoy the... Just, there's so much in this game. The number of workers that I really like the polyomino part of this game is I'm trying to fill in this whole area, but you have to With, follow very strict rules. And it's also the, your economy is based upon that. Yeah, too. super yeah. fun. And it's at, when you first play, you're like, "There's no way I can get all this done." But yeah, as you get, this is a game you definitely get better at. Mm -hmm. Very much, uh, a lot of fun. Very highly regarded game. Uh, don't ever spill it though, because have fun sorting it back out. That's true. This is one of those games I've never played, but um. Not interested. Wasn't even asking you to join. This is for smart people. Feast Whoa. for Odin, number 28. Sorry, it's pouring off a mic on the Whoa. meat. I got to dump it somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't take it from both sides. <laughs> My number, uh, your number 28, people, is was 28 last year for them. Two mm -hmm. years in a row. This is the seventh year it's been on the list. And I'm actually very surprised that the sequel and... Trequel, what do you call the, the third one of the trilogy? Have neither one of them has made the list. Trequel, but the first one is still on the list. Okay. Even though the second two are being played all the time at conventions, and that is Great Western Trail. Great Western oh. Trail. What's next? I don't know. There's Great Western Trail Argentina, and there's Great Western New Trail Zealand. New Zealand. Yep. And they're both very popular, especially yeah. the one that came out this year. I see yeah. them played all the time. That's New Zealand, I think, this year. Yeah. But I haven't seen. But they're not. They haven't hit the list like Great Western Trail has. This is Alexander Pfister. It is. I was it just going to say. We had Alexander Pfister introduce a number. We, we did. did. Coincidence? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow. Just saying, uh, this is a very, very popular game. I remember that year because Great Western Trail and Terraforming Mars came out at the same time. Mm. And, and the heavy gamers were really struggling. Like, yes. Uh -huh. Which one? Yep. Mm. Uh, but they, they've sorted themselves out into opposing groups. Don't worry. It always happens. That's true. Um, so anyway, that's your number 28, Great Western Trail. Number 27. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. Uh, okay. I don't know that guy. It's he was funny. reading Ambie's book, though. I saw that. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I wish we got an Ambie. <laughs> <laughs> You said Mandy is. I said Ambie. I said Ambie. Oh. I wish we'd gotten Ambie. He Would was you... reading Ambie's kid's book. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Do you want Ambie to read his book? That'd be funny, actually. Yeah, yeah. If Maybe... they had gotten together and done that, that would have been funny. Ambie. We know who Dan Hughes is. I also know who Ambie is. Did we get Ambie to do one of these? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I love oh. you. I love how it's like Cora's dad is the main thing everybody uh, says when they see Dan. I love that. Ampy, his last name is Valdez. Uh huh. I didn't get to the V's. I uh, see. I see. Also, Just if you ask, are didn't get to the G's because you didn't ask me either. That's true. Uh, if you are fans of Dan and Cora. And you maybe wanted to see them in a Dice Tower promo in our new Kickstarter campaign, Whale to Look. I believe this is Oink Games' first ever promo, and it's going to be on our Kickstarter. Wow. Oh, it is? Yes. On our Kickstarter. It, is, it is on our Kickstarter, yep. Yeah. All right. That's My cool. uh, That's number cool. 27 is was number 26 last year. This cool. is a game that... It's not so um, good anymore. It, it, no, it's, <laughs> it's, trash. It's, it's really good. It's a Katala game, at least a co-design. Okay, well, never mind. It's right, good, right, right. My number 27 is Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. And I'm sorry, I'm keeping it to the Days of Wonder edition. Because I, while, while the, the Mojito one is certainly blingy, I still prefer the original production. Because it was already... Such a ridiculous toy factor. You know what I mean? Yeah, I really, I really want a, like an in-between one. Yeah, I want one that has some of the mechanical. Yeah, newness. there were some, there were some changes, but the changes, the new updated mechanisms yeah. of the new one, with this sort of, I mean, it's funny to call this one <laughs> restrained, right? 
but <laughs> look at that piece of trash. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want this form factor with those rules. My big, the biggest offender with that um, Mojito Studios one was the card quality. It was, it was the bad. The cards were terrible quality, but they had a plastic factory. It's like, wow. yeah, yeah. It was, it was too much plastic. I thought, but, but, and this has a ton. Yeah. Um, but to me, I, I look, look the, the the mechanical changes. Sure, that's fine. I never had a problem with the me with the mechanisms in uh, Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. This does a lot of things that are really cool in a family weight game. This is a very simple game. It's it's a lot of set collection, right? It's contract fulfillment, um, but. It has polyominoes. You can't even really see it because they go along the top of the board. Yeah. But it has a polyomino thing before people hey, Ken, were doing. This is a 360 video, guys. So oh, okay. Scroll there you go. You rotate it. We're about um, to see it. So it has that. It it, it 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 still. This is the thing I always come back to. But I love that little thing that that they do with the with the market. You take the deck and you split it half and half. Face up. And face down, and you shuffle them together. Yeah. So that when you're putting out these different rows of, of cards that you can take the whole row, some of them you know what they are, and some you don't know what they it's are. It's such a clean it idea for is to simulate, again, not knowing kind of what you're getting, who you're dealing with in the market. It is brilliant. It is so smart because some of those cards are going to be negative, right? They're going to give right. you corruption. Um, and I, I'm sorry. I know player elimination is usually bad. I love someone get fed to the crocodile. Mm -hmm. I'm all about it. Feed the people to the crocodile. No, I've been too mean to Tom. Roy, feed Roy to the crocodiles. That's right. He's dead now, uh, but he's gonna still come to life for the, you know, the, the, the doing the slides. <laughs> no, I'm not. Don't all die. right, don't die. Cleopatra, love it, love it, love it. My number twenty-seven was twenty-one last year, so about the same thing. This is Imperial Settlers. Empires of the North, mm. baby. Uh, this one shakes up the Imperial Settlers formula, I thought. We had a few games that were using kind of a similar idea, similar systems. And this one came along, gave you a, a sort of a cleaner delivery system. The decks were pre-built, so there wasn't any messing yeah. around. That was the one of the biggest hurdles, I think, to getting people to playing Imperial Settlers. Uh, and again, it goes back to that whole our expansions, good or bad kind of thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. You could pull it out of the box and start playing with those decks. You got expansions and suddenly the barrier was much higher. Ooh, yeah. do I want to build my own deck? Uh, well, what, what kind of expansion cards do I want to throw right. in? You know, it got messier. This one went back to the drawing board and said, there's no messing around with your decks. You want to play this faction? Here's the deck of cards for that faction. It's not modifiable. Shuffle it up, draw it, play. And it had, besides you know playing cards and activating their actions, you had some worker placement in this yeah. one. Where you had a couple of tokens you could put out, and that would let you activate drawing more cards, uh, mining your resources and getting goods out of that so you could spend them for more cards. This had some interesting stuff, some, some twists to the formula that I thought made it um, a little more approachable, maybe? A little more, you know... I thought it was more approachable. I like it Definitely yeah, more approachable. Yeah. And it has a great solo campaign, too. It has a very good solo campaign as well. Lots of factions available now. Um, yeah, Empires of the North gives me what I want. Those decks of characters, powers, fun stuff to do. They all play differently. I love it. My 27. It's a good one. My number 27 debuted last year at 45 and has moved up consistently. And I, you know, and this came out, I don't know, five can't, years ago. You can't be consistent if it just debuted last year. Well, that's consistent. Over a year, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's the thing of the day. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how long I can keep this going. This was also but. on your list. The, Tom, <laughs> I love your consistency. If there's one thing I value yeah. in you as a human... When I first played, I don't this, want I, you to be uh, inconstant and consistent. <laughs> Poor Tom. When I first played, this game, I thought it was very good. Uh, I thought it was fine. It was good, but yeah. I was like, I'd rather play King of Tokyo. But this one just kept coming back, and it just kept getting better for me. And when I added Marvel, I was all okay. Yeah, I thought it might be. And this is Dice Throne. Mm -hmm. Oh snap! Oh, Jesus. And I'll tell you what, I was, I am, I watched the Dice the Dice Throne uh, Championship at the World Series of Board Gaming. That was fun to watch, and just. But this game is a game that no matter how deep you get into it and stuff, it's still just a light throw dice game. Yeah. And it is when you get to pull off your fun special powers, it's yeah. just really entertaining. 
It's like Yahtzee, seriously. Yeah, it is. But it's, it's very like Yahtzee complicated theme. to compare no, no. to Yahtzee, I think. But no, but I mean the same excitement you get. Yeah. For for the oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. You great. get a Yahtzee about as much as you're doing Yahtzee. That's what right? I'm saying. It's yeah, the yeah. same thing, but it's 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 even more exciting in this game because you're like it is. And the the wrath of me comes down upon you. Yeah, because you can even sometimes make that happen with card play too. So it's not just simply a That's roll fair. or die. Yeah. And don't don't overestimate uh, or underestimate. I guess I should say that Krampus fire. That is okay. Krampus I, will light you up. Krampus is no joke. Yeah, but I'm telling you, you wait till you get to play with Ice Man. I love how awesome. somebody's like, I thought Z was about to stay in content. <laughs> that that was that was the joke. Okay, your number 27 was 37 last year, 49 a year before that, and then 33. I don't know what happened there. Mm. Anyway, this one is well. This is on Mike's list. This is Paladins of the West Kingdom. It's not Enough been on your list. with these games. I didn't say it has been on your list, oh. Mike. I said oh. it is on your list. Oh. Uh, Paladins of the West Kingdom. I keep seeing the same cover over and over again. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> this is not the highest Garfield game of the people, but we're getting close. Mm -hmm. um, definitely a very popular one. It's one of the heaviest, for sure. It is. It's it, Of this grouping, this one is my favorite. Although, when I did my listings and these guys came out in the... They came out in the above 100 somewhere, in between 100 and 200, both Paladins and Architects, mm -hmm. and they came out right next to each other. Yeah. I put Architects just a smidge above Paladins, because I think I like the strategy in Paladins more, but Architects, I love that whole round everyone up and yeah. ship them off the prison. It's fun. Yeah, that is fun. But yeah, this is a this is a meaty game, and it's very, very satisfying. And that is your 27. Hello. It is Asher from Shelfside. Tom Vassal has told me my number is 26 told me to make fun of him too, but I can't think of anything right now. Okay, that's it. Happy holidays. Number 26. Bye-bye. Should oh, I make man. fun of him in proxy, or...? Come on, man. You should, did you see Kane Clanko? <laughs> Light him up. Make fun I, of his hat. Are you telling people I said to make fun of me? I don't approve of that. Hmm. Did My you, number uh, 26 to make fun of you. is um, worked at all. up nine spots. And Z, I want to play this game again. And I want to play this game again with you. Aww. And I want to play this That's game... That's the nicest thing he's ever said to That's me. That's correct. It is pretty nice. And I want to play this game again with you with Leviathan. My number 26 is Abyss. Why can't I be involved? I haven't played Leviathan. You, Come uh, in, Tom. I mean, you don't usually <laughs> like us playing together at conventions. Well, because yeah, it's game, not Tom, here's the thing. sociable. This game isn't new, Tom, so you'd hate it. <laughs> I have been putting games right and left in my thing that are older games that have come back up and hitting it. Yeah, but you're not playing them, are you? You're mm. just listing them. Yeah. But, uh, this is a... I haven't played this expansion yet. Lovely... Have you played the expansion? I've played uh, the Kraken, but I haven't played Leviathan. I've also played okay. the Kraken with the yeah. Black Pearl. I would yes. love, I'm not kidding, yeah. to teach both of you Abyss yeah. with the Leviathan expansion. Can, I mean, can we do it on the cruise? Don Honestly, Deal. we can do it on the cruise, right? Is the expansion in there? I don't think so. Oh. Tom, is the expansion still in there? I don't remember. Me neither. Yeah, and it's already I'll in there. I'll go check and I'm away. Yeah, <laughs> we, can, we can call Kenny. Um, yeah, so Abyss, a beautiful-looking game, and it's not a terribly heavy game. It's mostly a card game, mm -hmm. uh, but a little bit of push your luck, a little bit of select, select collection, a little bit of player powers, special powers type thing when you get the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I just I love this game, and I, and I do not play it as much as I would like to play it. So I'm going to make Z play this with me. I would love from, to play. It went from him being... Polite. I know. Yeah. I was like, hey, you're going to teach me. Well, do, am I wrong? Do you normally end up teaching this at almost every convention? Yes. That's what I thought. Yeah. And it's not just because people ask either. Right. I like teaching this Yeah, game. yeah. This game has a good, easy flow to mm -hmm. the teach. Yeah. I like teaching this one. Yeah. I, I, I pull it off the shelf. And I'm like, you, have you played this? And most people just haven't, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Because the game's a high in our estimation, Mike's and myself anyway, but I don't think it's like a... You know, it came out when Five Tribes came out, yeah. and that got very popular. That got I don't think juice. this was that popular. Not really, no. All right, my number 26 is uh, was 38 last year. Not sure why it moved up, and really it's about the same place. Uh, this one is a great, quick-moving game from Aporta Games called Bad Company. 
Uh, Bad Company was, from the very first time I played it, I was like, this is just fun. This game prioritizes fun first. And I love that in a game that doesn't take itself seriously, yeah. where the mechanisms are there just enough to service some silliness and a good time. This cover fits the experience. Okay, okay. You see that's what I'm getting at? Same artist, too. That's so what I'm saying. I, I get that. I get yeah. that. This one works. Yes, it really does. I still think the graphic design and stuff could be fixed in these games. Mm. Like the like the, the one in the middle where you're moving the stuff around from yeah. the... It, it's just not... The artworks, the, the graphic design could be better. It's a fun game, though, man. I like the look of this one. Yeah, I don't have any issue with the graphic design either, but I think I get what you're saying. Um, I like what's going on here. This mm -hmm. is very much like Space Base. If you've played that, you kind of know how to play this. You are, on your turn, you roll some dice, you assign them to, and everybody will use that roll. You assign the two numbers to a couple of characters, and they trigger whatever they trigger. You can hire new people and stack them on top of the old ones, so their midriff keeps getting longer and longer, which is very funny. Um, you are running away from the police after a big heist, so you can move your little car on the road. You um, get some special cards. That's basically it. Rolling and activating things and improving those columns, trying to get the most victory points. But the game moves along, like I said, at a really nice clip. It's fun to upgrade things just like automania which you talked about where you you can make a car the very first turn yeah in this one you are doing the fun stuff from the very first turn from the very first turn you can be like and i hire some guy <laughs> he's funny boom i put him right here he's getting taller <laughs> yeah and i'm doing all this like silly stuff fun stuff the meat of the game from turn one i'm, mm -hmm. I'm engaging in these things so i really like that a porta games is games tend to cut to the quick with what whatever the game is doing, yeah. you're doing it right from the beginning. Yeah. You don't got to wait for like a ramp up. And this one uh, certainly does that. My 26, Bad Company. I think it's funny that people are now using Space Base as the kind of uh, archetype of these types of games and not Machi Koro anymore. Yeah, I know, Machi Koro does not have the 1 through 12 thing. Yeah, that's true. Machi Koro is that mean streaking, and a lot of people don't like that. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. I, no, no Machi Koro doesn't have the one to one that this has with Space Base. Yeah. Where you literally have right. your old 2D6. That's true. That is true. And it's the numbers 2 through 12 or mm -hmm. whatever. That's true. Machi Koro is just like this activates on a 7, this one on a 9, this one on a 12. Yeah. Right. I gotcha. All right, my number 26 has been on my list for five years. It was 21 last year. This one has gone very high, and I'm still. Yet to play the expansions that came out this year for this. Is it Machi Koro? Uh, no, but it's a crossover with Mike or somebody, and that is Vindication. Yeah, I had it earlier on my list. Yeah. I really love Vindication. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree that this is, it is very abstracted. Mm -hmm. I really, I mean, it really is. I like the theme, yeah. and I can pretend the theme is happening. Sure. But if you change this theme to something else, it would probably also work just as well. Mm -hmm. But yet, it's just so much fun. You're taking one action, one movement, and one uh, location action. That's it. And that's simple. It's fun. I can pick different things to do each time. Maybe I'm going to go on fight monsters, or maybe I'm going to go on quests, or whatever. The game also, the end conditions, this is one of the few games that has end conditions that keep getting at it. Yeah, I do like that. eventually one of them happens. That's I a do. neat concept. That is neat, yeah. Uh, it doesn't take particularly long. It's just a lot of fun. Vindication. What are you writing down? You, I already taught you this one. <laughs> My number 26. Sucks. <laughs> no, the People's 26. People's Choice number 26 was 51 last year and 54 the year before that. It's only been three years, but this game is very popular despite everyone saying Marvel is played out and that chibis are terrible. Marvel United. There you go. Boom! Marvel there United you go. at 26. Very popular game, really is. I mean, being sold in Walmart yes. doesn't hurt. Yes. Yep. Um, and also, please, publishers, look, a cooperative game that's not mind-crushingly hard. Although yes. it can be. It can be if you want it if you to wanna, be. If you want to fight Thanos or yeah, yeah, right. whatever, you can make it hard. But it's this one you can beat out of the box. Yes. Red Skull's very beatable. Right. Uh, also... This is a cooperative game that I would teach to anybody as their first cooperative game. Unless you just hated superheroes. Sure. Right? No, I mean, like, this is a great introduction to cooperative games. I agree. 
Yeah, and it has fun little miniatures and everything. Yep. It just works across the board. So that is the People's Choice 26. Thank you, Evan, for the super chat. Hey, everyone. Lance Meister, the Undead Viking here from Gray Fox Games. And I am honored to announce game number 25 for my old OG video review buddy, Tom Vassell. P.S. Roy Kennedy is awesome, and that means Last Light is awesome as well. <laughs> Yeah, Lance. <laughs> That's a Viking right there. That is. Let's alaboom up this number twenty-five. <laughs> That's a really terrible transition. <laughs> Nobody's gonna get that either. <laughs> Kabuki Kiwa. Yeah, my number twenty-five is is down just a little bit, but that's just because these lists shift from time to time. This this is um, a spectacular, confrontational. Potentially very mean game with a theme that you would not expect for that type of game. This is Petrichor. I love this well, game. Somebody was just talking about that, right? And and this is Accidental the knowledge. yes. This is the rare exception mm -hmm. where the big box has not. It, it's actually I, I I play this more in the big box because it has it actually makes it set up quicker. Okay. Because okay. of the of the stuff that's in, in you know the the game trays or whatever they use to to do it, it makes the setup quicker, and it's just a, a a lovelier production, which was already a beautiful production, but now they've got the little look at that. The, the clouds that are above the tile. So this is a game where the board is made up of tiles that are placed out, and they'll you know you could put different types of tiles, and the idea is that you are playing as clouds. The players are playing as clouds, and they uh, are going to be moving around these clouds around the board and they're trying to get the clouds to spill their rain onto the tiles below in their color that's going to have some type of a scoring or a majority type of a thing. So this is like kind of an area uh, majority uh, type of a thing where you are actively screwing over other players, moving their raindrops and, and it, it, so it could be very mean but it is such a neat game. It really is good. Um, I've had many people ask me to teach them this. It's an easy teach. Um, it's card driven. So good. And it has a ton of expansions if you want to go beyond that base game experience. And the expansions are all good. Not necessary, but good. So Petrichor, I absolutely love this game. I know a lot of people don't haven't played it, but it, it's, it's wonderful. Love Petrichor. All right, my number 25 is one that, just like I need to teach you guys uh, Abyss with that one expansion, I need to teach this to Joey Evans because mm. he's never played it. And I uh, found out the other day, and I'm like, you've got to play this. I've got you. I'm going to teach you. This yeah, is just, Manhattan Project, Energy Empire. Yeah, just talk slowly or quietly. Or, you know, no, slowly when you're teaching this to Joey. Make sure, <laughs> you know. I've taught games to Joey before. Just really be deliberate in what you, and, and point a lot. Pointing. This is a die. Mike's been here for a week. You pick these He's up and you... He's got a meter every day. <laughs> every day. Every single no. day. Oh, oh my goodness, Mike. It's the lack of key lime empanadas. I'm sorry. I said we'd get them tomorrow. Yeah, okay. well, it's not well, tomorrow, is it? <laughs> <laughs> nah. Wait till you hear my number one. It's going to be... Key lime empanada? No, no. It's going to be just a profanity fest, <laughs> is all I'm saying. Oh, my God. Because we're getting the empanadas after the lift, right? <laughs> I'm going to let the expletives fly. That's all oh, I'm getting my at. word! What is going on? <laughs> I don't know. I'm being painted into a corner. I'm the bad guy all of a sudden. Z, what's your 25? My number 25 <laughs> is Manhattan Project Energy Empire. Mm. This is a worker placement game uh, that does some really neat stuff. You have a big stack of workers in yeah. this one. You also have energy that you are collecting, and that kind of behaves like a worker boost. Because you can go to a location that somebody else has sent a worker to, but you need to stack energy underneath that little cardboard character, and the energy is a little cardboard token as well, uh, so that your new appearing stack there is taller than anyone else who's already there. So you can visit a place that's been taken with more energy. And once you do that, you go to one location on this board, and it's gather this, take this card, what have you. You're creating your little energy, you know, empire. Um, you then 
Go to your own personal board in front of you that you've been seeding with cards and abilities and what have you, and you can activate all that stuff. Yeah. So the game has a tremendously fun curve to it. Whereas at the beginning of the game, you're like, hmm, I'm going to collect three coins. That's my whole turn. Who's next? By turn seven, you're <laughs> like, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to buy this card, I'm going to put it right here, then I'm going to activate it, and I'm going to activate this one. I get six coins, I'm going to spend those six coins, and I get three coal, and then I'm going to do... Yeah. It's fantastic. It's such a great ramp. And then when you take a reset turn, and sort of recall your workers kind of thing, you also have a really fun time, because you're collecting your stuff, you decide what, what energy you're producing, and that is dice. You roll yep. dice, and you're chucking a bunch of dice and you're like okay well the coal die makes you consistent energy but it's sort of pollution you can have the clean energy die which is only makes like up to a two but it never makes pollution and it's really clever and interesting and engaging uh end game goals lots of different things to go for this is so good i really really like this game it's one of my favorite worker placement games and i'm kind of I think it's unfortunate that it's in the Manhattan Project line because a lot of people had Manhattan Project, which was popular, mm -hmm. Manhattan Project 2, which a lot of people I think didn't like, and then this comes out, uh, and I feel like it got overlooked. Mm -hmm. But I really, really like this one. It's not the same thing. So, yeah, my number 25, Manhattan Project Energy Empire. My number 25 is... Was is the third year it's on the list? It was twenty three last year, and it is a gigantic g game, but a fun one. Foundations of Rome. Oh boy! Uh, Foundations of Rome. These big boxes are so much more appealing to me when I slide the tray out, pop the lid off the tray, oh. and we're ready to play. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Also like that when I take a piece out of that tray, it tells me the income that's going to give me that turn. Yep. It's just really well designed in that regard. It's also a fantastic game. Yep. I like the style of this game. Um, I'm very curious how well this game will do this year when Foundations of Metropolis comes right. out. Right, and more people will probably get a chance to play the game. Yes, but it also is not going to have the gigantic building, it so it will be curious. But it's also affordable. Yes. So, I'm curious to try that out, just to see what that feels like mm -hmm. to play with the, again, cardboard punch-out kind of feel. Yeah, he took some ideas from a choir and everything, and it came yes. out with this just yes. wonderful game, very much like... Foundations of Roman. Yeah, mainframe says it's too expensive, but good news, Foundations of Metropolis <coughs> will be cheaper. Yep. Alrighty. Uh, People. People's Choice 25 is been on the list for five years, and it's been very consistent. They debuted at 82, but then was 28, 28, 29, 25. Wow. Yeah, it just it's here to stay for a while, and it is the superior dice game. Space Base. No, sir. Wow. I don't see Bad Company on this list. That's because Bad Company is too good for the people. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> no, I get it. Space Base got there first, and it is uh, very popular. has also had quite a few expansions. And also, I think a lot of people haven't just haven't tried. I really don't think yeah. they've tried Bad Company. I also think the theme of this is probably a wider sure. appeal. Sure, sure. I think that this, but this one gives you more stuff right all the time. You know, be, and, and I think there is something to be said. I mean, I, I like bulk games. I don't yeah, yeah. But in um, Bad Company, bad company mm -hmm. you roll the dice, people decide how they're going to allocate them, then the cars move, and this happens, this one. In Space Base, you roll dice, and everyone's like, da 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 Okay, now what? da 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 Buy a it's car. Faster it, it's pace. faster. Okay, yeah. okay. It's more like the dominion of this type of game. Mm -hmm, Just mm -hmm. kind of clean cut. But anyway, good choice, people, having Space Base for your number 25. The voice of the people is turning against us. <laughs> ah! Hey everybody, it's Rob from Rob's Tabletop World with the number 24. As in 24 hours day that Tom must put in for cruises, conventions, all the content you see here on the Dice Tower. So without further ado, let's take a look at number 24 in our top 100 countdown. Rob! Yes! I wish, honestly, that's perfect for this because... 
my 24 is a game that's a crossover with Tom, and it has tons of minis that I would love to get painted. Yeah. And Rob is an, obviously an amazing he painter. He's a very good painter, uh, yeah. So my number 24 is Monumental, uh, Matthew Dunstan design. That is um, the way that I've always <laughs> described... Uh, Gotta play it. The, the way I've always described this game is that it's kind of like a, um, a small... A, a, you're, the card play mm -hmm. is like the mi the micro. That's how I always put it. The card play where you're where you're kind of doing your rows or columns and activating a bunch of stuff. That's the micro version of what's happening in your city. And then the macro is that map of tiles, right? Mm -hmm. So the things you're doing in your player area then get translated to a kind of wider view, and you're moving troops around and you're gathering things there. But the the, the map almost feels. Very secondary to the actual game. Oh, it very much is. It very much is. Yeah, there's more going on. The, the meat of the game, the mechanism of the game, are mostly about how those cards work. Sure. The interaction of them, your, uh, whatever your civilization's particular strength is, you want to utilize that. So if you have a civilization that uh, it focuses on military, how effectively and efficiently are you utilizing your military cards? If you have one mm. that is a scientific civilization how well are you doing that you know what i mean does this feel at all like deus no it really doesn't feel as much like deus i know it has that still kind of the board but deus deus is about stacking those cards to get those you know yeah, be able to trigger yeah. a bunch i'm trying to think what this reminds me of this has a, this has a, you know deck building this has oh, okay, you know what i mean okay, okay. um yeah because you've got the three by three grid and you're going to be choosing um, a row and a column, and you're going to be tapping all those cards, but those cards are then going to like go away unless they have a power that says they stay. Mm, so you're okay. kind of cycling through a deck, and you're buying new cards and, and things along those lines. Got it. Um, Got it. But okay. where Tom says that the map is a, is a smaller aspect, it's, it really is. I mean, you're going to have some battles there on the map, sure, but if you're a not a military faction, you probably don't care too much about that you know what I mean because it's not really what you're going for okay, okay. so just a, a really good game the biggest thing against it was that it was a Kickstarter that was a super late and B very expensive they did have a non minis version but most people didn't get that but I think now this is more of this is readily available in a retail edition. I think so. Yes. I, I believe that you can now like see it at game stores. Right. And it does not need miniatures. The core game is a solid design, right? Mm. It looks beautiful with all the minis. It looks very grandiose, but the game is really a smaller game than those minis would have you think. Yeah, I think that's true. It's I mostly need to a card play game. this. I know we have it in the library, right? Mhm. Mm I would not play it with too many people, though. No, I think... It has some... S Who would you play it with? List them. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Send me an email. <laughs> yeah, it's... It, th there's, there's downtime, although the new expansion cre has a new play mode that is like a simultaneous play mode. I haven't tried it yet. That mm. makes it go much quicker, apparently. Mm. You heard that, right, Tom? Mm -hmm. That they've come up with a new Matthew Dunstan came up with a new play mode with this new expansion to make it simultaneous. Oh, I did hear that. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mm. All right. Hey, hey, calm down. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's okay. My number twenty-four. We're skipping you. Okay. I I might not make it to twenty points before you, but I will <laughs> wipe you off the board. My number twenty-four is King of Tokyo. Mm, nice. Wow, wow. That's a nice. Uh, that's a nice little segue there. You like that? That was good. The threat of violence. That was good. Thinly veiled as I speak of a game. That was good. <laughs> that's how we did it. Like I yeah. met in the game. Oh yeah, right? that's how I met. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah. Don't worry about locking your windows. <laughs> <laughs> My number 24 is, like I said, King of Tokyo. This is an excellent game. A, we, we've been mentioning Yahtzee. Well, here you go. This is my Yahtzee, you know, um, favorite flavor. It. In it, you are a monster. You're going to be rolling some dice three times, Yahtzee style, using whatever you roll to gain victory points, to heal up your monster, blah, 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 but mainly to uh, smash face. Mm. And cake whoever is controlling Tokyo out of there 
so you can be the one to inspire fear in the populace and rake in the victory points if you can hang on to Tokyo. Of course, while you are in Tokyo, everybody else's attacks hurt you, and you can't heal while you're in Tokyo. So you gotta you gotta bounce at some point. Go lick your wounds and let somebody <laughs> else be the king for a little bit. Really like this one. Super fun. Very breezy design. Wow. This is one of those game designs that you look at it on the surface, you're like, this is easy. I could have made this. Mm. And I think there is something to be said about games that come across that way. Yeah. Something that looks effortless mm -hmm. is what I mean. This game looks and feels effortless. Right. And you don't realize how much is under the hood to yeah. make it feel that way. I agree. To make it so clean, to make all those cards interesting. Yep. Uh, the economy in this game. Really like this one. A superb uh, design job. My 24, Richard Garfield's King of Tokyo. Now you're up. Right. I kept waiting for the, the credits to come on. I'm like, oh, that's right. <laughs> the credits, Grandpa, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> I want to see uh, the Samuel Jackson job at the end. He All will. Right. He mm -hmm. will. My number 24 was 20 last year. It's been on the list for four years. Thank you. What is ah. happening right now? Ah. Oh, you're on the camera. <laughs> you so got seen. <laughs> are you fading? I am fading. Wow. Is that placebo one? Wow. Oh, look at this. Interesting. Wow. Right in the middle of our... 270,000 milligrams of caffeine. Anyway! In that uh, where were we? Uh, four years on the list. It's Beyond the Sun. What is going oh, on? This, this was is on your the own people's list. list earlier. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because this is already on the people's list. I really do like That's this right. game a lot. I remember when I first played this, I was not interested in it at all because it's, it really doesn't look great at all. And um, after I played it, Except I for thought, that cover. The cover looks great. The cover's fine, the but I remember... The gameplay is like, oh... You look at yeah. that board, and that's not I remember the first time we people. played this, oh it all kind of looks unfinished. It remember? did. I we're thought, like, we were like, is this a prototype? I or? had to talk you both into it, and yes. really, like, I think you guys might like it. I'm not sure, but <laughs> ignore I, the board. I remember midway through that game, we both were looking at each other like, this is really good, right? I remember this experience yeah. being very much like the Fallout Shelter experience. Yeah, I agree. Very much. You know, we played Fallout Shelter, we were like, yeah, all right, we'll try it. And then mm -hmm. halfway through, Mike and I are like... <laughs> This is really good, right? <laughs> yeah. Same thing. Same yeah, thing. we're like, this is clever. Like, yeah, I like yeah. what's going on a lot. Right. I I could see this game climbing my own personal ranks here mm -hmm. if I played it more. I agree. I yeah, agree. but I really do like it. That's why it's on my list. It's great. At twenty four. Very good. You made a good choice there. Too. You Thanks, did, guys. And reward yourself with a slurp of. <laughs> I want a minute. Give me a second. Coffee Let me get juice. through the Key lime bang. Final. Final. Final Garfield game here. Oh, finally. finally done with this nonsense. Oh. This is the fifth one. Uh, I, mean, I mean, sorry, it's been on the years for five. It's been on a little. It's been on the list for five years. Uh, it was thirty-one last year, and now it is up to twenty-four. Architects yep. of the West Kingdom. This one's the most popular. Used to be Raiders, but Architects is more popular. Yeah, because it's about as approachable as Raiders. And it has is. a little and bit I more. I wouldn't be upset on. if they went to this at some mm -hmm. point. Maybe with their next trilogy went back down a little. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that it could happen. It that could does happen. not happen as far as I can see historically from board games. Yeah, yeah it's true. That's fair, yeah. Rosenberg has not made Bonanza two. He has not. Oh, that would be so good. I would play it though. Mm -hmm. Anyway, very popular game. Put out workers, and you have twenty. You, you start with all workers. your workers. Yeah, and it's great, but they get thrown in prison, and you got to rescue them. And, but the more workers you put in a spot, the better that spot gets. Great stuff. And I'm surprised that putting more workers, the better the spot gets, has not been stolen by other games. Z so mentioned one. Notre Dame there, has yeah, there's not, it's not very often, though. There's not yeah. that many that do mm -hmm. it, yeah. So anyway, that is your number 24, Architects of the West Kingdom. Hello, fellow gamers, and Happy New Year. This is Brian Pope with Arcane Wonders, and this is number 23. <laughs> I can't drink. That shirt's so bad. My arm. Uh, look, it. when Tom says, ooh. ooh, that shirt's too loud, yeah, I get counseling. My rods and cones are all this. <laughs> uh, I, you know what, though? I give Brian Pope credit. He always wears that exact kind of shirt. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't care. I, I, every time I'm, since I met him, I told him he stole my grandmother's wardrobe. <laughs> he doesn't mind, and I appreciate that. Don't let people talk out of what you want to wear. To be fair. Unless you're wearing... Like, nothing. Then you should probably put clothes on. Why well, that got weird? 
<laughs> You'd made your tie from one of his discarded shirts, didn't you? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Brian is great. Owner of uh, Arcane Wonders. All right. My number 23 is up two spots, Slow and down, I man. am Junkie. thrilled that this game is going to become uh, available again soon because it was sadly out of print uh, after its first Kickstarter campaign. And this is a game that has kind of like gotten on people's radar. It's in the Old West. Oh, wait. Designer Johnny Pack. Oh. My number 23 is Coloma. Oh, That's I right. never played it. This game is fantastic. It's so good. Um, and yeah, this is a game that had, um, like I said, this Wild West theme, and it had one Kickstarter campaign. Obviously, it funded, it did well, but then you just couldn't get it. And so when it was getting good acclaim, it, it, it was one of those games that kind of spread by word of mouth by the people that had you know, backed mm -hmm. it. And then a lot of people were like, oh, my gosh, then they played it. It's really good. I can't get it. Um, it has, as stupid as it sounds, this great little uh, magnet thing that you could just... Why are more games not using this? It's so good. You don't have... Because it's a foldable board. You don't have to put a hole in the board. You don't have to have a weird thing because you just pop that... that you guys were there on Tuesday when we were put, snapping those things yes, together. Everybody it's a pain. was upset, right? The pain. Snapping the dials on that game. Yes, yes. That All dials game. should be magnetic. Yes, yes. And so this is coming out with an expansion and a, a reprint of the first edition. And it Will is it have just, magnets? Will it yeah, do well, that? Of course, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, say of course. Yeah. yeah. Do it, do it for me. Yeah. I guarantee it. Idiot. Um, thank, you, thank you, Mike. Yeah, no, it's it's really, really good. It's got clever card play. It's got a little bit of a, a, of a kind of like a, a moving around, a, a little kind of track or rondelle. Um, it's got a little bit of like, uh, not player combat, but you're fa facing off against these little bandits. It, it, it's really good. It has a neat economy with the gold nuggets that are in a limited supply. Um, it's just so good. It is so good. And again, I'm glad that this is going to be more available to people because it deserves uh, a wider release. So, Coloma, my number 23. I hope uh, if you are interested, you get a chance to play it. This is one I would like to play at some point, but, you know, I'll, I'll check out the reprint. Okay. When it's in the library, it. yeah? When they fix it. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to fix it first. Then I'll play it when they fix it. My number 23 was number 20 last year, so it's hanging on strong. Just came out with an expansion, though that is not influencing this. My 23 is Evergreen. Oh. Uh, Evergreen. Lower than I thought, actually. Really? I know you really, really I like it. I really this like it. There was something about this game, and in fact, the entire new philosophy for Horrible Guild Games, this company. They have this tremendous look. There's a few companies out there that I can identify the game, I like to think I can, yeah. from the look of the game. And I think Horrible Guild now fits that. Mm -hmm. Whoever their graphic designer is gets a big kudos from me because they are, they have an eye for art deco, simplicity, extremely fine line work. A lot of white space. A too. lot of white space mm -hmm. they play with, yeah. A great this, split, and yeah, it's yeah. just gorgeous. I mean, mm -hmm. the, yeah, the great split did it. All their their games look like this now, and I love it. So the look is a big selling point for me. But then it takes some of the ideas that were in photosynthesis from the same designer mm -hmm. and cleans them up, gives every player their own board. You are setting up your own puzzle, uh, growing trees, being careful about them casting shadows on other trees behind them so that they don't generate victory points and having to it's i love the idea of having to put together a puzzle that matters like you do it all and you're like okay great i'm making 14 points now i need to take the sun and it moves over to this side of my board and now all the lights going to be cast from this side that is mind bending mm -hmm. stuff i love that you have to do that four times with the sun sort of casting shadows from all four directions. Really neat stuff. Gorgeous, like I said. Clever. Um, a nice return on the, like, you know, thought involvement for how simple the rules are, I think. This is one of those 
Yeah. Big game in a fairly small box kind of games. Really like that. I think this might kill photosynthesis. Isn't photosynthesis already basically dead? Kind of. Like, I used to like photosynthesis. This is orders of magnitude better than photosynthesis in my mind. I don't agree on that, but... I do. This is the original Splendor Killer. I'm telling you, when, when, when I played that photosynthesis expansion... Oh, I was in that game. Yeah. I remember that. Evergreen, my number 23. My number 23 has been on the list since 2013, which I believe makes this year number 11. Mm -hmm. It's been a debuted at 13, was as high as 5. Whoa. A new version just recently came out. You know, I'd say, did that affect games being on my list, or is it just a nature of the game still being on my list? Yeah, you know, I don't know. Whatever. Right. Yeah, that's fair. The new version didn't really affect me. I was, I'm kind of neutral on it. I, there's better things and worse things about it, but it's still one of my favorite games. Kemet. Oh, Kemet. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Love you've liked, this game. You've this is liked this from the beginning. Monsters yes. on a map style game. I love it. I love walking around with it. I hate scorpions with a passion. <laughs> if that scorpion crawled off that box, I'd burn the whole building down. Mm -hmm. But I love controlling a giant scorpion in a game. Yeah. Or a giant elephant or whatever. And mm -hmm. this has all kinds of cool things in it. Um, yeah, it has a few component issues with the new one. Yeah. And uh, it needs a nicer, prettier board. But I still like how the whole thing plays. It's just so much fun. The text, it's yeah, it's just really great, Kemet. Your 23 was 20 last year. In fact, your 23, folks, debuted at number six, and for four years in a row, it was number one on the, on the people's choice. It was number one, then it went down to two, then six, 10, 9, 17, 20, 23, because as all the games fade out. Is but for it? a while, this was the most popular game in board game dumb. Is it, is it gloomy, pandemic? Then? It is pandemic. Oh, pandemic. Yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Pandemic is a popular game. And uh, yes, there's spin off after spin off after spin off at this point. Yes. Pandemic um, colon. <laughs> that's a, that would be a game and a half. Yeah, that's, a, that's a game. Like, let's fix this. Like, you, you. What, what special role do you want to be? <laughs> I'm like, I, don't, I don't want to be any of the roles. <laughs> Pepto! <laughs> I'm going to well, be the polyp person. I'll be the the, the camera guy. <laughs> okay, anyhow. That's awful. <laughs> camera guy. <laughs> That's the worst job, I think. I'm going to be the camera guy. A little to the left. <laughs> anyhow, uh. Pandemic came out 2008. Say cheese. It's changed. It's changed cooperative games forever. It, it really has. has. It absolutely It is has. the single biggest influence on cooperative games that exists. They're, yeah, uh, exactly right. Like, before Pandemic, you didn't have many cooperative there games was at some. all. Now, I mean, we'll give credit to Lord yeah. of the Rings for sure, doing it. Sure. Shadows of no, the Camelot. No. Yeah. Battles are Galactic, but Pandemic put it on the map. It exploded it, Where it. people who didn't play many games were playing it. Very, very popular game. Yes. So, that is your number 23. I'm Ulus Dynas. Designer of Champions of Midgard and other thematic games, and this is number 22. I like Very how he nice. said his games were thematic. And, too, uh, and, and, and other, other thematic, thematic games. games. Absolutely. Yeah. My number 22 is a very thematic game. Um, down, down a little bit, but still uh, fantastic. By uh, a designer that I think definitely people are going to start talking about. I mean, uh, my number 22 is Blue Moon City. Blue Moon City, baby. <laughs> yeah. People are going to start talking about. So, there was a game called Blue Moon by, by the same designer, and it was a two player. Which you probably never heard of. Don't, don't worry so about it. So, my number 65 for me, my Blue Moon City. Right, by the exactly. Way. It's a crossover with Z. Um, so, that was a two player card battling game. A um, tremendous game. Tremendous game. And Blue Moon City came out afterwards, and really the only thing it has in common is the 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 look, the 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 kind of the different uh, races, and the idea of having dragons that are kind of yes, like, really that's it. It's yeah. a follow up in the story. Yes, it is. Right? It is in yes. Blue Moon. All right. these the, the the great leaders have perished, mm -hmm. and factions are at war. Right, and in their clashes, they destroy the city. 
Yes. Blue Moon City then is rebuilding that city. They put aside their conflict and they're rebuilding. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It is cool. Probably didn't help this game. Right. But, you know. Yeah. No, this is a really uh, clever, it's a tile game basically where the, the board is tiles, right? And, and they can be in different uh, places. So that doesn't change things all that much. But it has a little bit of semi-co-op. Z talked a lot about it, so I won't belabor it. Um, but to me, my favorite part of Blue Moon City is, and I've mentioned it before, it's card driven, and it's one of those games where it's like, gosh, I really want to get this done this turn. I don't think, I just don't think there's any way I can do. Well, wait a minute. And you're looking at your cards because they all do different things. If I move the dragon, I think I can do it. And so I really love this idea of taking this stuff and utilizing it in its best way. Yeah. And you can pull off these great turns that you, you know, you're not sure you're able to do, but you can do it if you do this and you do this and you do this. Yeah. So, I really like games like that. Blue Moon City is. It also doesn't doesn't seem to be AP and now no, is producing even you're right. all those options. You're right. I found I have not found the people. I played this the last time I played this, I taught it mm -hmm. at the World Series of Board Gaming. Mm -hmm. I taught it there. And you're right. There's yeah. not a lot of sort of waiting around to figure things out. Yeah. I don't know what it is because it's certainly very thinky. Yeah. But I think people kind of know what they want. They kind of like, get I'm gonna it. Yeah. I'm going to build a couple of cubes there. Yeah. This turn, I'm just going back to the obelisk and turning in the gems. Yeah. Yeah. It's it moves along at a nice clip. It does. I'd say you know it, it plays up to four. I think you can get a four player game in 45 minutes. Yeah. It's an great. hour. You know. Really good. I've, I've taught this game just because I figured no one's ever played it. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Not my top 100, but it's a good game. My number 22 is a two-player only game, head-to-head -head game, uh, a, a modern one as well. It was my 25 last year. And this has a lot of things that I figured were going to be put it in, you know, in, in top echelon for me. This is Radlands. I was going to say, it's the one I mentioned earlier, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the look is certainly one of those things. The setting, this post-apocalyptic, you know, um, I don't know, punk, punky kind yeah, of setting, yeah. Mad Maxian setting. The cards with powers thing, the sort of CCG adjacent feel of it. And then a really interesting economy laid on top of that. That is minimalistic almost to a fault, you know. Mm. In this game, you have water as your main resource. That is your economy. And you have three water droplets. You know, you can sometimes get a fourth, something, yeah. you know, very small like that. And you're using those to play cards, to activate abilities, that sort of thing. There's so much that gets done with that very truncated economy that I find it fascinating. The other really cool thing, and many games have done this in the past, but I love it is having bases or having whatever locations. You, you know, normally it's like three of them, right? Most games have like three. And in this one, you have three places that give you abilities, and you are defending those things. If they get overtaken, you lose it, and now you have just the other two you need to defend. If they're all lost, boom, you've lost the game. Uh, the new Star Wars deck-building game kind of did a similar mm -hmm. thing, you know? Yeah. I love it. I love that idea of... Because you, you know, having something that's just yours, because immediately you're different. Like right off the bat, that's it's like, true. I'm the guy who's got this water tower that lets me do the thing, and this uh, caravan that lets me you know, attack as I run by you. I love that stuff. So, yeah, this is a great game. Uh, Roxley Games knocked it out of the park for me with my 22 here, Ratlands. Gosh, you can say that about just about all their productions. That's true, too. They, <laughs> they make amazing stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My number 22 has been on my list for four years. It was 13 last year, and this is a three-way crossover, but I like this game a lot, and I would like to take issue with Mike's comments on this game. Yeah, let's all do it's that. It's Dune Imperium. Uh, yeah, Mike, i got some issues to take. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. Mike, i got a bone to I don't pick. get your complaint about content, especially since half the games you back come with that much content on the first shipment. I, I understand that you are not... That, that you are not al going along with me, but I'm telling you, that's how I feel. The idea is... It came out in 2020. The game came out. The, the, the game... And two expansions. ...was really good. Then it came out mm. with one expansion. As most games do. Correct. Then, within 
it felt like six months. Well, 11 months, but okay. Another expansion came out. Okay. Okay, so you got all that. Then you had the upgraded stuff. Okay, the, you can do that. Then it had the big box. Oh, okay, you can do that and get all this stuff. Then it had Uprising. This is over the course of four years. Hmm. All I can tell you is that there are Citric people acid. on both sides, right? So it's I not. I just don't know. I, look, I get that there's people on the other side. I don't get that you're on this side when you order a game from the Too Many Bones Company mm -hmm. and it comes with twice that much content in one box. But it's one product. It's, it's one product. No, it's the Dude, same thing. I'm it's sorry, not one no. product. It's one shipment, not one product. I'm, I'm just, I'm Potassium? telling you that... that uh, and this winter came with six expansions out the gate. Right, so I bought it once. No, that... that I bought that, it once. That, that's <laughs> such a dumb argument. I'm sorry. I, that's how I feel. I felt like, hey, this is what we've made. Sugar Here you go. Alcohol? If you want it, you get it. It wasn't like, hey, hey here's, here's Endless Winter. And then three months later, oh, hey, you want... The I like it this way it's That's better fine. to have the content come out so you can learn sure. the base game and anyway okay. this game is amazing it is amazing it brings Doom yeah obviously life. i hate it because it's in my top 100 well i'm saying positive things in my turn about the game anyway uh, <laughs> i i love the mix of deck building i think uprising and i i will grant you uprising is a weird product okay but I, 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 but I think Uprising is the better product at this point in time. I, I, what I don't quite get is the vitriol. I, I'm like, I, I tried to understand your argument. You're I like tried to so much stuff, but then you, then you sit there and you have so many games you're listed at tons of things. I tried to explain why I felt like something about it just threw me off, and apparently I've got everybody that that you know, like you and other people disagree with me, and that's fine, and you know, that's all good. All I was doing was explaining. Why I felt that way. If it's invalid, if it's crazy, if it's stupid, be that as it may. But it is how I felt. I just don't understand why. Why does it? But why do you like it better with more stuff coming at the beginning? <laughs> like, why is it better to have five expansions at the gate than not than to get them over time? Because again, I am making one purchase here. Right? Whether it just felt odd to me that it was like, it just felt like it was like Dune. Okay, I'm really into this game. Oh, wait a minute. Do I need this now? Man, okay, maybe I need, do I, oh, now do I need this See, now? I, uh, I cannot stress hard enough how much I'm on the other end point. I would that's much fine. rather come out in a, in a stream than a one shot thing. And that's cool. Except for Marvel United, in which case I want everything on Earth. Right. I mean, look, you, we, we can certainly agree to disagree with this well, one. Obviously, we're agreeing to disagree. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> that's the whole point of this show. Yeah. Anyway, I love this game. I like the combinations. It's a lot of fun. Dude, Imperial. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's me. <laughs> what? That, that's going to be right. me. It didn't come to <laughs> my phone. What is wrong with you? Uh, just saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a good self, ain't it? My, I really wanted to see what you gave what you sent to me. My number 22, or your number 22, folks, has been on your list for seven years, and that is a Feast for Odin. I didn't do any build-up there at all. Uh, it was 26 last year and 26 the year before that. Very popular Rosenberg yes. game. This is the one that everyone loves from Rosenberg. Like... I like a lot of his games, but Lahav is on the people's choice, like in the top 250 or something, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere way down there. People love Feast for Odin. They do. I like Feast for Odin a lot. I do too. This mm -hmm. one, I think, would, I would say, other than Agricola, is probably his most critically acclaimed game. Yeah. I, yes. I think you're right. Z's. I never played this crap. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> this has like 87 places you can send your worker. Don't look at me while you're talking mm. about this game. So anyhow, um, Feast for Odin, you're number 22. Hey! Where our family plays games. Yeah, and the, and the number, number is... is wait, wait a minute. What? It's supposed to be the game and the no, number. No, these oh. folks don't want us to do no game. That's the oh, number. Okay. 21. 21.
<laughs> Gotta love Mick and Starla, man. Oh, man, the energy. They're yeah. like, bam, 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 bam. It's, it's like, like a choreographed dance. That's right. Look, you give us 15 seconds, you're getting 40 seconds worth of excitement <laughs> in 15 seconds. That is true. They, that is what they do. That is. They, they come with it. Um, my number 21 is the uh, a new game to the list, and so it's debuting very high, and that's because it was my number one game of 2023. My number 21. Wait. What? Hold up. Huh? Wait a minute. Slow, what are we confused back. with? This was your what number? My number one game of 2023. Is now your... 21 game... What am I? What, what? Go ahead. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. This was your number <laughs> one game last year. Yes. And it's 23 now. 21 now. No one else seems to be like kind of shook by that. No. No. This was his number one. Oh. Yeah. My, my number one game of 2023. Oh, oh. <laughs> I think that your number one game in. No, 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 no. I was no. confused why you were confused. Oh, yeah, like, I felt like you meant last time you did the top no, 100. No, 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 no. This was your number one. No, no, this was my oh, number one. Oh, this was your number one in the top 10 yeah, in, that of no one cares about. Correct. I'm back with Mike. Correct. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, I'm like, no, that was, man, I feel like I'm getting hit on every side <laughs> I'm here. I'm just confused. No, okay. Go ahead, talk that, to that, me that's slow. That's fair. It's ice. Ice? Which is what happens to they, water they, they, they when it now. freezes. You can't say it twice. Ice? Ice. Baby. Um, <laughs> no, see, this one goes dun, 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 dun. Ice is a exploration game that I have said feels like to call in reverse because you're using action points um, and you're digging down instead of building up. Uh, and, and it has some asymmetric powers depending upon the faction you're playing. It has a gorgeous, gorgeous, ridiculously gorgeous production um and it is just so what am i missing here this is crap in the comments oh, okay. you know, people talking about <laughs> i should not read the comments no you should Sorry, not i'm listening to you for real no no i get it it's um it's just a game that for me <laughs> does so many things that i like i like exploration i do agree about the reverse to call that's a really good way to describe yeah it. yeah i need to try this i'm putting it on the list yeah but the the, the difference is that it does uh, action points in a more modern way so You've got, I believe it's eight action points, but you can only use one or two on your turn. Sometimes three if you take a particular action. So you're doing, you know, your two or three action points, then it goes to the next player, and they're oh. doing their two or three I action points. I will say, points. as a small side note, I didn't think the game was particularly clear about that. It took me a long oh, time really? to figure out that oh. you couldn't spend them all in a row. I thought the rule oh. book part on that wasn't super clear. Okay. At first I was like, can you just spend all the action points you want? It was written very weirdly. Oh, interesting. But it I have makes to look more back. sense when you can do a few actions. Yeah, yeah. I like that. It's mm -hmm. more of a a currency than if you look at it that way. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's just another way. Yeah, it, it is. But uh, yeah, I just think it's it's such a good game. And and again, I've taught this to people and and really had some very good uh, experiences. Um, some people feels like like feel like it runs long. I haven't necessarily had that experience, but I, you know, there could be maybe a little bit of AP involved. Uh, again, I have not found it for myself, but I think it's terrific and and a first game from a new publisher. Yeah, that's very impressive to be able to put together a production like this. Uh, as your first game. So it kind of reminded me of Fantasia a little bit, you know, coming out of the game yes. with the really impressive production. So This Way Games, I believe. They're a French publisher, I, I believe. So, Ice. By the way, we want to do a nice thank you to this company. We did the best covers of 2023. Yes. Yes, and Ice won. You guys voted on it, not us. We yeah. were just facilitating Correct. it. Correct. And they sent us... A, a print of the cover without the words on it, just the picture. Just the artwork. That's awesome. Awesome. It's stunning. It's really nice. That, so that was nice. cool. Um, I hope you guys vote on a good piece of artwork next year. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> I'm yeah. almost afraid to tell people that because I don't want like some reverse thing going on. I know. Where we yes. have a meltscape on the wall. <laughs> right. You don't uh, have to frame it, I suppose. You <laughs> that's know true. I mean? We don't have to. Mm. I guess. You know what I mean? Hey, man, you gotta use You it. haven't had kids. There's sometimes you put things up and you're like, Yeah, you're like, huh? When will they forget about that? <laughs> right. Got it. Yeah. All right, my number 21 is brand new to the list. I'm excited to talk about this one. It's the one that's brand new here to this chunk of 10. Uh, and it is now my favorite flavor, I guess, of a whole family of games, of which there have been many. You talk about too many boxes. 
There's been a bajillion boxes of this flavor. This is Marvel Zombies, mm -hmm. a Zombicide game. There has been a lot of Zombicide games out there, and I think Marvel Zombies is truly a next evolution. Let's pretend we're a year in the future. Yes. <laughs> Would this tie with Deceased? It's a... Uh, yes. Okay. It's I'm just curious. It's the same stuff. It's I mean, almost the same thing. The Marvel Zombies... Okay, let me ask you this then. Yes. Split between the you play the zombies, you play the heroes, which one do you like better? I like what Deceased is doing better, which is not, not that I like what they did better. They're only your heroes against the zombies. So I like that better. Mm. And in fact, if you want to be technical, I have the wrong game up there. Marvel mm -hmm. Zombies is you are zombies yeah. eating fools to contain your blind rage. Okay? Yeah, that's my favorite one. Right. Yeah, I actually like the the other one is technically X-Men Resistance or Heroes Resistance yeah. if you get the sort of mass market one. Whatever. This system is so clean. It's so well done. It takes all these things that over the many years of Zombies Eye became persnickety rules and said, forget that noise. We're cleaning all that up. Hmm. And by noise, I do mean noise. one of those yeah. things was noise. <laughs> um, so the whole noise thing, gone. The whole you can shoot into a place where you have friends or you might hit them, gone. The opening doors fiasco. The doors are on. The doors are off. You leave it on. You spawn when you open. You spawn when you flip. Cleaned up. It's everything that might have been a sticking point before is refined. And that's not one of those things I ever thought I might yeah. say about Zombicide, but I do think it's quite refined and, and cleaned up a lot. Um, the games are also actually shorter. When they say this yeah. game is 90 minutes in the scenario, I can actually believe them. Mm. Well, for me, it's usually because that's when we get overwhelmed. And destroyed. that's okay. That's as long as it lasted. I don't yeah. care. You know what I mean? Right. If it's because I died, it is still hard. But a lot of the older Zombicide, I'm talking like, you know, Black Plague. If they said... This scenario is 30 minutes. You were like, <laughs> it's going to be two hours. You yes. know what I mean? And that's when we finally die. It's, come on. So I'm glad that it's also shorter. This is super fun. My number 21, Marvel Zombies. So good. Mm. All right. My number 21 has been on my list for five years. It debuted at 21. Oh, uh, interesting. Last year was 27. I don't know. Moved around a bit. Sure. This is my favorite party game. Yes. We just did our top 10 party games, so you can cross-reference if you'd like. And it is Detective Club. Oh, wow. Of all the Dixit-style oh, yeah. games, this one's my favorite. This is good. When I was a kid, I played uh, Malarkey. Or, Gosh. And I wanted to really like Malarkey. Malarkey was a game in which... You got handed something, and most of the people had something blank, and one person had the, the, a, a real thing. And everybody told, like, stories, and you had to guess who was lying. The number of people in the world who can read a convincing made-up lie and make it sound good, is, it's not many. Yeah, and I include myself in that number. Yeah. It's, it's hard to come up with something on the spot and not laugh or break or anything. Right. Detective Club does the same thing, but it works because you are explaining why you place these cards, and sometimes... You place these cards for valid reasons, and it sounds so stupid, everyone thinks you're a liar. And because that's going to happen to several people, where they, people think they're liars, the real liar can get away with it. Mm. It is so much fun. It allows, well, liars to exist. The app isn't working anymore for Detective Club. I never use an app, so I don't know what we're talking about. Yeah, I'm not sure. I just wrote down... Uh, an app would be useful, though. What but anyway, yeah. What did the app do? I don't know. Maybe you could send it out to everybody that, with a word, and it would randomly not send it to one person. Hmm. Yeah, we never played with an app. Yeah, I don't know. I just used the little tablets that came in the game. Okay. But it is so fun, and it works with the Dixit cards. And again, I have that mega deck in the library that can yes. be used with That's Dixit. That's right. That is Detective cool. Club. Yeah, yeah. It's fun to have. Yeah. If you come to one of our conventions, check that out. You can play that huge deck with Dixit. Uh, Muse, Detective Club, uh, Mysterium, I when think, I maybe. When I Sleep. Or... Yeah. Well, no, not with When I Sleep, unfortunately. Oh, that's the one you can't, right? Yeah. Dream is what I dream. But no, that doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> no, that's not Tom Vass on Detective Club. Anyway, yeah. uh, thank you for saying a younger, more, yeah, sure. Anyway, that's my <laughs> 21. The People's Choice 21 has been on their list for eight years. Okay. It is not the highest it has been, but it was higher than the last two years. It was 25 and 22. Um, and this is a crossover with me, Orleans. Mm. Orleans. Orleans. Bag building, very popular game. Um, the other games haven't, you know, I know a lot of people say they like Altapuana better yeah. and other things, but Orleans still wins out. This is the OG that people really like. This yeah. one caught on and just hung on, didn't it? Yeah. It did. You know, because, again, there's a lot of Euro games that do a lot of interesting stuff. I, it's interesting to me how some, or why, I guess, some catch on and stay there. This is one of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this still, it's still a lot of people's... Favorite game, I, I guess think. So. You know? I guess that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very right. good. We have 20 more left, folks. The top we'll be 20. Back tomorrow. Woof. All right. Well, we're about to check out for today. Um, before we do, just a reminder um, our Dice Tower Kickstarter is running. Mm. So check out dicetowerkickstarter.com. Also, a reminder we like doing these lists because I know we're going to comments later on. Do Tom and Mike actually like each other? Um, <laughs> We just get passionate when we argue. And, and yes, and it's all, again, Also, there's in not a single fun. person in the Dice Tower Network who dislikes Mike except for Dan. Um, <laughs> everyone else likes Mike. I don't know about all that, but... Okay, Dan likes you, too. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, hey, and also, where was this? we got ten more introductions coming in our next, yeah. in our next one, and then our... Our top ten is just going to be our normal top ten intros. Yeah. But thanks to all these people for doing that. that it's was, been it's been great. Okay. And, and it's been fun. And I don't think any of the three of us had seen them before, right? I tried not to watch any yeah. of them because I I, I, I was the one who hunted them down, but Roy right. put them all together for us. Yeah, it's been really neat. It's great. It's, you, it, we're, it's super fun for us to look yes. forward to seeing yeah, them. I mean, we're, yeah, we're, yeah. we're seeing them when you do, so it's very cool. Will we fund by number one tomorrow? That's what that, I'm saying. That would be a very That's ambitious what I'm goal. Saying. I'd love to see it. I'm saying before Sunday morning. And I'm saying tomorrow while we're live with the top ten. That'd be amazing. Don't prove me a liar. How soon before I get to uh, Iceland? Approximately 2027. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, folks. Well, I'm excited. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicia. I'm Z Garcia. Have fun gaming.